Hi, so what is this talk going to be about? Well, if you attended iOS Conf SG last year, maybe you remember that at the end of the first day, we had this little lightning talk, which was basically a best of of the Twitter account iOS memes. And so this year, while well, the organizer asked me if I could do something a little bit similar, but this time I don't want to do just another best of. Instead, I want to tell you about an issue that as iOS developers, we face at least once a year. Because we need to talk about the fact that when you tell someone that you are an iOS developer or just a developer in general, well, people tend to think things like this. They tend to think of some kind of mastermind developer that knows everything and that is able to do everything, create an app basically like with a snap of a finger. But we know that it is not the case and it's time to share the awful truth. So I have some footage that I think depicts really well what it feels to be an iOS developer and let's just go over it. Now you might remember that a few years ago we had this big migration from Swift 2 to Swift 3. You know what some people call the great renaming. And this video I think it shows how how it felt for us as iOS developers because we started the migration tool and immediately afterward we had a ton of errors everywhere in our project and we just did not know what to do or how to deal with the situation and we were just left with like one or two weeks of work just to make the project build again. Now some of us also need to work with core data and I think we've all been sold to by Apple this idea that core data is the easiest way to manage data in an iOS app. However, when we start to use it and start to want to do some complex things with core data, Pretty much, it started looking something like this. Here you can see an expert iOS developer working with core data. Now, another big topic when you're an iOS developer is dealing with auto layout constraints and auto layout constraint issues. Now we all have our strategy when working with auto layout, you know, we think about what we are going to change, how we are going to update the constraint. But most of the time, once we have hit the enter key, we see that actually we've made a big mess and well, we are not sure how we are going to just solve it. Now, some of us also need to maintain their own custom CI. And it's definitely not an easy task because there are a lot of steps and you need to make sure that they are all working perfectly well together. So, you know, first you need to make sure that your unit tests are passing, that everything is green and good, all your UI tests also. Then you need to build all the variants of your app and don't forget the Catalyst app. Then you need to code sign your app for all versions. Then you need to upload it, maybe to Fabric, maybe to TestFlight, maybe to the App Store. Basically, it never ends and it's just so easy to mess it up. And while we were talking about auto layout and about how we all have our own strategy to deal with it, well, some people also have a very specific strategy of their own. Basically, what they do is that they just do anything with it it goes to shit and then it goes to shit even worse and their project basically is fucked up so fast. But there's also something I'm sure we've all had to deal with is when we are given a legacy app to maintain, we take a look at the project and we see that the app delegate is so big, there are so many things implemented with it, it feels like the entire app is coded inside the app delegate. And basically when we see it, sometimes there is just so much thing that we are not sure if we are supposed to be like amazed or just deeply concerned about the situation. And how could we not talk about SwiftUI, which is the new hot topic for iOS developers? However, when we learn about SwiftUI, when we watch the WC videos, we get a sense that it's going to be super easy and we are going to be super productive so fast. However, when we try to do it ourselves, we see that actually between the tutorial and the real life, well, there is a pretty big difference. All right, that's all for this lightning talk. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Now to finish, please allow me to do a little bit of auto promo. So if you want to follow iOS meme, you can follow the Twitter account. If you want to keep up well with just me, you can also follow my own Twitter account. And if you want to keep on learning about iOS, you can go and check out my YouTube channel where I try to put content that I think can be helpful to iOS developers. Thank you again.